Hello everyone. This is not going to be your typical video that I normally do because I'm putting even lower production value into it than I usually do. Um, so many of you guys were asking about this. So this here is a uh, DC plant that we're building for production. So this is going to be put into testing for production. You will see many more videos about this ALG comm right here because uh, it's going into a production environment, it's going to be monitored, it's going to be worked, it's actually going to be used, and we are going to test the hell out of it, uh, just to prove how awesome of a product it is. So yeah, many of you guys were asking about um, information on this, so uh, what I'll show you here is that we've got, uh, here's our RBF 4011, this is our router for the project. This is the ALG COM uh, 48 volt 10 amp SNMP monitor power supply. Okay. And over here are the Siemens DIN rail breakers. We've got a 6, a 2, and a 2. Uh, and then over here, if you want to take a close look at what we did here for the DIN rails, by the way, is that uh, these are just two Home Depot angle brackets with a piece of DIN rail mounted on it. Should be able to see this pretty well. And so that way we can uh, have our DIN breakers uh, mounted on the same shelf as this. Why am I doing this this way? Uh, because the site where we're testing from, the tower owner was very, very nice and said that we could put our equipment there to test with. Uh, so they're letting us use their power and their site. Um, obviously, we're exchanging favors. I'm going to be doing some work for them to compensate. Um, so, yeah, there's the overview. Here's our batteries here. These are, uh, what are these ones? These, there we go. What do we got here? Because you guys are going to ask. Eh, they're 12 volt, 4.5 amp hour. There we go. Each one of these guys here. So they're just little batteries. They're just, realistically, this uh, site has a generator, so it doesn't necessarily need long run time, but hey, let's plug it in. Okay, so this is the first part of it, and if you're wondering what this power, uh, this little gigabit Ethernet PoE for right here is, you'll see that in just a minute, but notice it's on the back of the shelf, this 2U. It goes in here to a coupler, and from the coupler it goes to the front of the RB4011, and then over here, You'll see a couple of color-coded tags, cables. Yellow goes to the router. Blue goes out to this uh, gigabit connector here. So let's turn the thing on. All right, so let's give it some power. I'm going to plug this in one-handed. Oh, yeah, notice I'm using the microphone on my camera. Okay, here we go. So that guy's fired up. First things first, I'm going to turn on the batteries. So the batteries are now connected to the unit. So you'll see here, focus, that it is now charging. Uh, I'm charging at 5 amp. Great. Um, so everything's happy here. Now you'll notice that we've got um, our yellow positive. So this is the one for the RB4011. Goes over to this breaker here, which is yellow. Okay. So that turns that guy on. And then there's no negative here because they are tandem. The negative is actually the same over here so there's only one negative cable going over here to where we've got uh, them all soldered together so both devices actually share the same negative connection because they would anyway if I did it that way blue is the one that goes up to the second cabinet so basically the way that this is going to work is that the fiber connection is going to come into port 1 and then port 6 is going to go out to the tower switch which we're doing uh, port based VLANs so the idea here is that uh, basically this little switch here is going to have all the radio equipment plugged into it. So we are going to have our four access points plugged in here and then our back calls are going to be over here and to conserve PoE ports we basically used a uh, SFP to RJ45 gigabit. Uh, this will be changed out for a 10 gig fiber feed at some point to connect from the 10 gig feed here, but I'm actually pretty sure that this doesn't use uh, or support SFP plus, so this switch is also going to go away eventually. But this is here for testing purposes. Um, here is the in from the main router, you know, from this thing over here. So it's going to come in right here. It goes through a surge suppressor, which is literally just a ubiquity surge suppressor that I butchered and put a ground lead on. Uh, this is to make sure that we can see the voltage because this is a test environment. It is production, but it is a test environment regardless. So it goes through this meter here, which I'll demonstrate in a minute, and then comes down to this edge switch. So basically, this is just an edge switch tower model 
jank together. Down here is the ground terminals, so we've got one ground going to the switch and one ground going over here to the surge suppressor. And then down here you can see our ground lug and here are the ports for the cables. So this one here by itself is going to be where the, uh, or sorry, this one here is going to be where the cable comes in. I didn't put a ruler to this by the way. I didn't. Is there any shame in that? No, because realistically as long as it works really well, I'm fine because the game test equipment, right? Okay, so yeah, this guy will be U-bolted uh, to the tower and uh, all the shit will come onto here. Okay, so now let's actually like plug this in. So, um, uh, cable. Okay, so we're going to plug this one in over here. As you can see, the green light is not on yet. There we go. Take that over there. And... And we will simulate this thing being connected. There we go. So that's plugged in over here now. See our green wire, or a green LED. This will actually be anchored better. I'm probably gonna put that in behind there once the cable comes up from out. So let's let's turn this thing on now. So if I hit this breaker here, you're gonna see that this green light comes on over here. This green light comes on over here. And we've got 54.3 volts coming into this enclosure. Um, this watt hour meter, that it's just part of the functionality of this device, so it's probably not going to get used, but it will tell us how much power we've consumed, which is handy for hydro concerns. So we can see right here that um, this guy is booting. It's blue. All right, so right now, pre-boot, it's at 8.6 watts. The bootloader is activating. 54.28 volts, so that's good. Less than an amp. So, 8.6 watts consumption right now. I think in total we're going to end up using about 32 watts is what the calculation came to. Um, so each one of these ports, so these first four ports here, VLAN, 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 and those VLANs are tagged on here. Um, the whole idea for that is that um, each one of those VLANs become direct access to one of these ports. What that allows us to do is that these ports here will each be uh, a point-to-point -point, uh, link on OSPF, but it, those point-to-points will VLAN through this cable here back to this router where the router can do its job with the port-based VLAN. Uh, these four here are untagged together as a group and they're just passing untagged across this port back to here. So that port is in our last mile uh, bridge so that anything that's in there uh, will actually just get uh, an IP address from the last my VLAN, but we're tagging out the access points and CPEs. So the access points themselves that are connected to here will actually have a VLAN tag on them to uh, lift them out of the last mile. And the same with all the CPEs that are connected back to those access points. So that's kind of how that works. So you can see this thing's booted now. It's cool. Here, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see this. Here we go. So you can see now that this thing is booted and uh, we're consuming not even 10 watts, 54.3 volts still, 1 point, or 0.17 amps, so 170 milliamps, nothing. Uh, if you're wondering how I'm powering this switch, it actually has a 54 volt input on the back of it. So there you go. So that's basically what we're doing here. So we've got our power supply for the whole plant, one cable, uh, 48 volt at uh, say four and a half amp hour and we've got our breakers here battery breaker uh, router breaker and uh, outdoor enclosure breaker and uh, that's basically everything that we're doing here and then it's mounted all within a 2U shelf uh, the reason why it's mounted in a 2U shelf is because the tower owner was kind enough to let us use one of their racks at their site so they said hey you guys can use uh, some rack space just mount it in there and I'm like okay so I know I could have just eared and eared and put it on the rack but then I needed this shelf for the batteries anyway and I need a spot for the breakers anyway so to keep it tidy and put it together this is yet another option oh and just an FYI uh, a couple of guys um, have mentioned that uh, maybe I should go into business uh, Thomas and I and start doing uh, custom enclosures so if you guys uh, want custom enclosures built 
uh, you can reach out to us um, through the ISP Technology Group on Facebook or just uh, you know shoot me a PM you know who I am hi uh, and we can build your enclosures to spec and even suggest the equipment that needs to go in them uh, before we send them out to you so we can do regular drop-ins we can do uh, full uh, like border enclosures whatever you need it's just you just let us know what you need but um, yeah there it is that's basically what's going on here with this setup let me do a zoom out here lights there we go that's outdoor that's indoor this outdoor enclosure is powered and the data comes through like that in theory we should be perfectly fine because that power supply there is capable of providing 10 amps um, this cable here uh, realistically it shouldn't push more than about 2 amps over these cables at all but at 54 volts with 2 amps you know that's that's over 100 watts capability the cable that we're going to be connecting this to is about uh, 75 feet long so you know there's not going to be much current loss on that cable I mean I know it is 22 gauge but eh, we're putting 100 watts over there you know what you do with that with air fibers okay air fiber classics but uh, so that's it there is the explanation as to what is going on here and uh, yes we will have another video with this awesome ALG com power supply shortly showing you guys how we remotely monitor this to know when mains fails and how much power we have left to run on so um, yeah oh and there will be one more video directly following this and that's the installation of all this equipment at its new test site so huh, there you go hope you enjoy guys have a great night bye